young, young. To think how entirely my future happiness is wrapped up in that little parcel. Really, it hardly seems worthwhile. Oh, matrimony. It, now, look, what is it? Can't you see I'm soliloquizing, sir? You have interrupted an apostrophe. <laughs> I'm the bearer of a letter from His Majesty the Mikado. Oh, a letter from the Mikado? What on earth can he have to say to me? Oh, take a seat. <laughs> executions have taken, taken place in Titty Poo for a year and decrees that unless someone is beheaded within one month, the post of Lord I Executioner shall be abolished and the city reduced to the rank of a village. But that will involve us all in irretrievable ruin. Yes, there's no help for it. I shall have to execute somebody at once. The only question is, who shall it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so. But as you're already under sentence of death for flirting, everything seems to point uh, to you. <laughs> to, to me? What are you talking about? I can't execute myself. Why not? Why not? Oh, because in the first place, self-decapitation it's an extremely difficult, <laughs> not to say dangerous, thing to attempt. <laughs> and in the second, it's suicide. And suicide is a capital offense. <laughs> that is true. That is true, no doubt. We might reserve that point. Uh, yes. It could be argued six months hence before the full court. And besides, I don't see how a man can cut off his own head. A man might try. <laughs> Even if he succeeded in, in only cutting half off, that would be something. <laughs> yes, it would be taken as a token of his desire to comply with the imperial will. No! Oh, pardon me, but there I am adamant. As official headsman, my reputation is at stake. I can't, I, I can't consent to embark on a professional operation unless I see myself to a successful result. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you, but it places us in a very awkward position. <laughs> My good sir, the awkwardness of your position is grace itself compared with that of a man engaged in the act of cutting off his own head. I'm afraid that unless you can obtain a substitute... A substitute? Certainly, nothing easier. Puba, I appoint you my Lord High Substitute. <laughs> I should like it above all things. <laughs> Such an appointment would realize my fondest dreams. But no, at any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. <laughs> My family pride to be my guide. I'd volunteer to quit this sphere instead of you in a minute or two. 
But family pride must be denied and set aside and mortified and mortified. My brain it teems with endless schemes, both good and new, for titty poo, for titty poo. But if I flip the benefit that I diffuse, the town would lose. Now every man to aid his clan should plot and plan as best he can. I heard one day a gentleman say that criminals who are cut in two can hardly feel the fatal steel and so are slain, are slain without much pain. If this is true, it's jolly for you, your courage screw to bid us adieu. Recollect, we're disrespected. I neglect who thus effect this aim direct. So I object. And so, although I wish to go and greatly pine to brightly shine and take the line of a hero fine with grief condign, I must decline. And go and show a friend and foe how much you dare. I'm quite aware it's your affair, yet I declare I take your share, but I don't much care. I must so I take your share, but I don't much so care. I must take your share, but I don't so much care. I must take your share, but I don't so much care. I must take your share, but I don't so much care. I must take your share, but I don't so much care. Two sinners out of silence in a dark, dark, dark. In a pestilential prison with a lifelong knock, awaiting a sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock, in a pestilential prison with a lifelong knock, awaiting a sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. A dull, dark dock, a lifelong knock, a short, sharp shock. A big black block to sit in solemn silence in a pestilential prison and awaiting the sensation of a cheap and cheap chopper on a big black block.